Hey guys, welcome back to Live Life Outdoors. Welcome to part two of the series of building an AR style pistol in the 300 blackout. So we'll be working on the upper receiver today, getting everything wrapped up. So hope you enjoy. For this step, you're gonna need the Ford Assist, Ford Assist spring and roll pin. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna go ahead and do the, the Ford Assist assembly. It's extremely simple, it's just these three parts. You got your Ford Assist, your Ford Assist spring, and the roll pin that holds it all in. Uh, simple to put in, really the only thing you need to watch out for is as you can see on the Ford Assist, how it kind of hooks. The very tip of that hook is actually what engages the bolt carrier group to assist it forward, believe it or not. So when you are putting it in, if this is the top of the receiver, you're gonna wanna put it in with that hook, as you can see like this, hooking inward towards the bolt carrier group. So really that's the only thing you need to watch out for. Um, as far as tools, you know, your non-wiring hammer, uh, a punch, or you can use a roll pin punch. I like to use a bench block um, just to kind of help keep the uh, receiver in place because otherwise you've got these um, notches here, these where the takedown pins go. Basically when it's sitting on them it rocks real bad so I like to put it on some sort of a block or a vise. Then you just put your spring on and then again just making sure that it's oriented right you want the hook inward. So you get that in and then if you just push it you know it'll just come right out but when you push it in there the roll pin is that actually what is what retains it so you need to get it under a little bit of pressure and get your roll pin started. This is usually the trickiest part, so I'm actually not going to put the spring under tension quite yet. I'm just going to start this. Okay, I gave it a few little taps to get started. Again, I was messing around with the forward assist, so make sure that's oriented right. Put it under pressure, and we're going to give it a few more taps to get going. Okay, a few little love taps there. We're real close, so I'm going to just finish it off with a punch. Let's get that in there. Come on. One more for good luck. Alright. So, now that's in, you can just do a little function check. Yep, it's staying in, and that's flush, so we're good to go. For this step, you're going to need your ejection port cover, the C-clip, spring, and hinge pin. Okay, so for our next step, we're going to be doing the ejection port cover, um, otherwise known as the dust cover. Uh, it consists of these four parts here. You have your actual door, your uh, ejection port cover, the rod, spring, and this little guy that's kind of hard to see is a little C-clamp. You'll see it better when it's on my finger. This little guy can grow legs and jump and you can lose them. So watch out for that one. It never hurts to have a backup or two. But if you're just doing one, you know, work with one kit and you don't want to buy an extra one, just keep track of them. In fact, you want to install them first. So tools, just needle nose pliers. Get that clamp. The easiest way is just to push it, push down on it. And then you're going to want to grip him on the back so that way the C is facing forward. It's really hard to see but there it's in there. Now on your rod you there's a smooth end and then you've got this little teeny groove in the opposite end and that's actually where that goes. It clamps on there and it basically retains it from going too far back. So put that in first. Really carefully because like I said this thing can jump. It's real tricky to grasp. Oh. Okay, I usually like to put my finger behind it and kind of use my fingers to pinch make sure if it does decide to jump I can somewhat hold them. Okay, so it's on there 
and it, it'll usually click like you'll feel it go all the way on and you can kind of just push on with your fingers again really hard to see but it's on there in that little groove and again the whole point of that is when you put it through uh, it the slot there it prevents it from going too far back otherwise it'll just go all the way through and hit this part of the forward assist area so hard parts done now onto the easier parts so you get your door and the way this functions as you already know I'm sure is it just goes into place here opens up so put your cover in place start the rod through almost until until it goes into here that's where your spring is going to go kind of a tricky part with that is your spring is going to need to be under tension so you're going to pre-wind it and put it into place so that way it's under constant tension so when you close the door it really wants to open back up and stay open now there's two sides to the spring as you can see there's this long arm and then the short arm the short arm rests against the receiver itself the longer arm goes against the ejection port cover door and this little groove right here okay so when you're thinking about putting it under tension you want to imagine that you're tightening the spring you can do that one of two ways one if you hold the longer arm because it's easier to hold and you're looking down at the short arm you're going to twist it clockwise and so when you imagine when that short arm is resting against the receiver long arm is what's wanting to open the door so it's wanting to push my fingers and the door down now you could do it the reverse way by holding the short end and winding up the long arm 180 degrees 180 excuse me same way if you look down on it it's going to be clockwise whatever you decide to do it's up to you personally I have found more success by winding up the short arm because the long arm's easier to hold and you rotate 180 degrees rest that long arm against the door and again that long arm goes right into that groove and the whole time it's going to want to fight you so you really have to keep your thumbs in place and I'm going to use my pinky or other fingers here to kind of guide the rod in now that it's in the first part of the spring I can kind of move it around a little bit here oh looks like the spring was getting away from me do not let that short arm go because it will unwind and you'll have to start over I've done that many times and also make sure that while you're trying to line up the back end here to get that rod in place into this uh, slot for it do not let the door itself lift up because that will have the same effect so I'm trying to find it while still holding that spring down there the C-clamp up here was kind of fighting me a little bit against there so now it's all into place this is not by any means locked in right now because I could pull this right back out you can see that moving when I pull what actually keeps this in place is the barrel nut or the handguard nut so that's going to be our next step is we're going to get the barrel on and start that whole process because the barrel has a flange there that will rest up against this and hold it into place and you'll see that next the next few steps you're going to need the barrel barrel nut and eventually the handguard okay so the next step I want to do is put the barrel on now you're going to need a barrel nut and depending on the type of handguard you're going to be using the barrel nut is going to be completely separate from the handguard um, like if you're going to be using a, a drop-in style handguard that you use a delta ring for um, in my case uh, my barrel nut actually it, belongs to the handguard so when I bought the UTG Pro Slim handguard it came with its own proprietary barrel nut so that's what I'm actually going to be using to put the barrel on and then we'll move on to using the actual handguard we'll put that on okay so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put some of this aeroshell grease on there and uh, a lot of people don't think this is necessary and maybe it's not but I just like to put it on there to prevent this from seizing at any point um, just due to the fact that 
we are going to be putting this under torque. It's going to, you know, experience great shifts in temperature, especially a lot of heat when we're firing. Um, and, you know, if I want to change the barrel or a handguard system later, I just don't want this to be seized really on there. And you don't have to put a ton on. I mean, a little dab will do you. Okay, so just, like I said, tiny bit on there. Now, I've seen a lot of guys put grease on this part of the actual barrel because that's going to go in there. Uh, you know, I don't see it being harmful in any way. Uh, I personally haven't done it and haven't experienced a problem yet without doing it. But I figured if I'm going to be, you know, doing it anyway, like I said, I don't see any harm. Um, if you want to be a keyboard warrior and attack me for doing it, you can go right ahead. But I really don't see a problem with doing this just to prevent any sort of seizing later. Um, some people even put a little bit of grease on the front where the barrel nut will go and screw onto so they can get an accurate torque rather than having metal metal friction building up so they're thinking they're torquing it more than they really are and again I don't see the harm of doing it so I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway even though it may not be entirely necessary why not okay so now that that's greased up there's this little pin on top that you need to index with the slot on the top of the receiver. So once you put it in, it'll go all the way in there into that slot. And we're gonna take our barrel nut and just hand tighten it. And then we'll torque it down to the spec. Okay, for this next step, I actually put this in my uh, bench vise. You're gonna want some sort of a non-marring vise block um, you can just google it. This brand is Nomar and it uh, has a little piece that slides on the rail on the top and then this hooks into the pivot and take down pin areas down on the bottom. Um, this other hole here is actually for uh, 308. So if you're doing a, a 308 build and you uh, need a block like this as well, instead of buying two, I just bought one that handles both. So just a little food for thought there. Now that I've gotten my uh, torque wrench set up, I want to explain something really crucial. So UTG has their own uh, nut wrench, basically, for their barrel nut that attaches onto my torque wrench. This is the way you need to have it. You need to have it to where your barrel is going to sit right in line with the actual wrench attachment point. The reason why that's so important is when they calibrate torque wrenches they do it right to this point because imagine if I was working on you know with a regular socket this is where the amount of torque is going to be uh, applied now if I were to do it like this I've seen a lot of guys do this what I've now done is added some distance from where the measurement point is like the torquing point that they have it calibrated to to where it's actually being applied so picture it this way you're adding more leverage or if you want to get fancy with physics, you're adding more length of moment. And in doing so, you're actually applying more torque at this point than you are here where it's being measured. So you're going to over tighten it. So always make sure, especially if you're going to the maximum range, like if you're putting this um, right at like 60 uh, and you do it from here, you're going to be over torquing it. So make sure that you're doing it to where this is 90 degrees to your torquing your torque wrench excuse me so that way the torquing force is the same as where it's calibrated very important to do so UTG um, they have on their uh, instructions to use the second slot so that's where I'm going to use okay I had to adjust the camera a bit there now let's get this torque 35 okay twice just for good measure so now that this is torqued, um, I've heard quite a few people say, well, once you get it torqued, these parts are aluminum. Um, they're, you know, they can expand and contract and, you know, the threads can get uh, stretched a little bit on here. So a lot of people actually say to tighten this, torque it basically, and then loosen it and then torque it again. Um, I did that on my AR-308 build. A uh, couple of keyboard warriors kind of made fun of me saying, well, 35 foot-pounds, 40 foot-pounds, whatever, isn't going to do a whole bunch to stretch this out. But 
I say, yeah, maybe, but at the same time, if it's not hurting anything, if it's not costing me any extra thing, you know, extra time, effort, whatever, all I'm doing is loosening it and retightening it, why not? You know, what's the harm? So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick, but regardless, we've got that torqued down. So the barrel is now installed. So we're going to move on to the gas tube and gas block, and then we'll put the handguard on. For this, you're going to need the gas block, gas tube, and roll pin. So we're going to be using an AR Stoner pistol length gas tube and a Yankee Hill Machine um, gas block. One frustrating thing to note, neither one of these came with the roll pin to install it. Um, it's actually pretty common. Sometimes the gas block company will say, well, we're not going to supply it, uh, or sometimes they do. Sometimes the gas tube companies will supply it, or maybe not. Just so happens neither of these companies supplied it. So, fortunately, um, my buddy lives close by, and I thought I really don't want to wait because uh, I just discovered it today. So I got one from him, but just FYI, you may want to double check that before you start going. Um, and you can always buy these real cheap online. Um, I just didn't want to wait, so I went to his house and grabbed it real quick. So, we're going to get this going. Um, grab a bench block. This one's actually perfect because it fits right in there. And the tube can rest right here. So, if you've never done this before, it seems intimidating, but it's not. So, in here, kind of hard to see, um, is a little port, the gas port that the gas from the barrel goes up into, directs it into the tube. Its roll pin is what holds it into place. And here you can see on the gas tube, there is the gas port hole, and then here's a roll pin hole. So as long as you're looking at it saying, okay, yeah, when I put this in, the gas port lines up with the roll pin here, it's really simple, really easy. Um, this is oversized, so you don't need to worry a whole bunch, um, as is the gas port hole that goes on top of the barrel on the block. Both of those uh, ports are oversized, so it's not too hard to uh, install. Very rarely have I ever had a problem. In fact, I never have had a, a problem with alignment. So nowadays it's pretty simple. So you just put that inside, obviously making sure the gas port is down and not upside down. That's really the only thing you have to make sure. Then you just put that into your bench block, get your roll pin. I did find my roll pin punch, so that's going to save us a lot of grief because this can be a little bit tricky. Okay, got that in there. Let's start putting it in. You don't want to go too crazy. Because the uh, punches sometimes can mushroom out the roll pin, but you want to make sure at least use enough mustard to get it in. Okay, we'll finish that off the regular punch. Okay, we are there. Now, these uh, bottom pieces, these are set screws, so you're going to need a 3 32nd Allen key to fit that and actually attach it to the barrel. And uh, I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on there just to make sure that they don't loosen up over time. So on the barrel, let me get it out of the vise so you can see. So I didn't talk much about the barrel. This is a, a seven and a half inch uh, pistol barrel from AR Stoner. Um, it's a one and eight twist. And what's cool is, so here's your, your uh, gas port hole on top of the barrel. It's already indexed with this little dimple on the bottom. So that way we don't have to worry too much about aligning it perfectly because once we start putting in that set screw, it's gonna kind of wiggle right where it needs to be. Uh, I'll still spot check it by siding down the barrel and uh, where the gas tube goes inside right here. Um, I'll just make sure it's centered up in there as best I can get it, but it actually should be pretty darn close because of this. So I'm going to put that back in my vise so it holds it for me and away we go. So I'm just going to 
Make sure the set screws on the bottom are loosened. And we're just going to slide that on home. Right on. It was a good fit. Sometimes these can be a little bit tight, but that one actually was really easy to get in there. Okay. I'm just, I'm just going to test on how well that locks, that dimple locks in that rear. Oh man, that locks it into place really well. And just a test fit when I double check here. That gas tube is not making uh, contact with the sides back here in the receiver, so that's actually about perfect. So, that is excellent. So I'm just going to back this out. And I'm going to put a little Loctite on here. Okay, again, I'm going to wiggle it, make sure it's in that dimple. Perfect. Okay, let's give that a little love. So the nice thing about that dimple in the back is it should do a pretty good job at holding it into place both side to side but also from it sliding forward. These set screws actually have a little texture on the the point where they contact the barrel so that texture kind of will grip into this real good but I just wanted to make sure with that dimple that's just a really nice uh, feature there that the AR sonar put in that barrel. Okay let's move on to the handguard. So again I'm going to be using the UTG, here's the box for it, the UTG um, Super Slim Free Float um, handguard. I really like UTG. I've used these on previous builds. Uh, this will be the 7 inch free floating rail. So all we do is just very carefully slide that on in. I had to take it out of the vise because my vise block here on the bottom was, was getting in the way here. So you slide that in and you get the screws that came with it and the allen wrench that came with it and you put two in each side. So we have two in the left, two in the right, two at the bottom and you just screw those down. They recommend torquing it to 25 inch pounds. Make sure you know the difference or at least have a torque wrench that you know whether or not it's doing foot pounds or inch pounds. Otherwise you're going to get yourself into trouble so make sure you're watching that. Um, Fat Max, I've got mine so I'm going to just torque it with that later. Um, so I'll just get these installed real quick. Okay, so that's what it looks like now that it's done looks pretty cool. Um, they did include um, some different rails you can screw on into the corresponding holes at the uh, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock positions here um, which is really cool. I like that and uh, so I won't mess with those until I actually know what I'm going to put there uh, if anything. Uh, the other thing I wanted to note, so here's that uh, hinge pin. The hand guard is what's holding it into place. So I mentioned that earlier in the video when we put the hinge pin in. Uh, that's what actually retains it. So you always want to make sure if you're going to wait a minute to put the handguard on or delta ring or whatever, just be aware that that may slip out um, eventually. So you're going to want to keep track of it. All right, so we're going to install a muzzle brake. And because I'm going to be shooting the suppressed, I went with Dead Air's Chemo muzzle brake. I'm really excited for that. And it also came with shims, so we can get that properly aligned. Here they are. And um, this is their 5 8 by 24 thread because this is obviously going on a 300 blackout. So you want to make sure you get the right size um, for the difference between like your 5.56 uh, five, uh, AR-15 or 308 or 300 whatever. Uh, you need to make sure you get the right threads, right diameter. So let's get started on that. So I had to take my handguard off because the handguard comes right up to about here, halfway through the threads. So I wasn't able to actually um, get a wrench on there. So a little bit frustrating, but oh well. We just took it off real easy. It was just, you know, those sets of screws. So first we're just going to test it, make sure that it goes on cleanly and easily. And then we're going to time it. Timing it basically is these three holes need to be perfectly at 12 o'clock. 
and so that's where the shims come in. So if, once I get this tightened down and torqued, if these are not or if uh, these are not at 12 o'clock, we got to start putting shims in between the barrel and the muzzle brake until it's lined up perfectly. Which that's actually really darn close. Yeah, see once you start torquing it, it does rotate a little bit. It was just a little bit beyond where I needed it to be. So I'm just going to take this off and start putting some shims in here, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so it actually only took uh, one of the smallest shims because it was uh, less than, I mean, the medium shims, just one of those was 45 degrees to adjust um, per their instructions. So I didn't need near that. So I got as close as I could to the 12 o'clock position. It looks pretty good to me. And uh, you just basically put a three quarter inch uh, wrench on there, or what I used was basically a uh, crow's foot and put that on my torque wrench at 90 degrees and then torqued it on there. Um, I believe they said in between, um, I think it was 35 and 45 foot pounds, or excuse me, 25 to 35. So I went ahead and did mine uh, to 35 and um, cranked it on there and that's, that's it. I'm putting the handguard back on. There we go, got that handguard put back on. Man, that looks sweet. Looks mean. So, um, all that we got left is just the uh, charging handle and the bolt carrier group. Okay, so as far as the bolt carrier group, I went with uh, Nickel Boron Aim Surplus. I uh, decided to splurge a little bit and get the Nickel Boron on there. And then just an AR Stoner charging handle, just real simple. To put this in, you can see there's these little wings on each side. And up inside the receiver, See if I can get that on camera. There's a little spot where this rail is cut out to correspond with those wings. So I'm trying to get a good angle of that. But these wings, when you put this up inside there, you kind of have to angle a little bit. But you put that in and get that locked into the rail. Once you do that, the uh, charging handle is installed and sliding back and forth. So locks it into place there. And when you put the uh, bolt carrier group, you need to make sure the bolt face is forward. So this cam pin's out of the way. And then you just get it lined up in there. Get the top into the top of the charging handle. And there you go. That's installed and ready to go. Man, that looks cool in there with the black and then that nickel boron contrast is pretty sweet. Okay, so we got our uh, lower receiver ready to rock and uh, Again, I'm going to be using the SB Tactical, the SBA4 uh, pistol brace. Now, again, I know there's some uh, controversy a, a while back, a year or two but, uh, ago, about whether or not these were going to be banned by ATF or not. By the time I'm filming this, it's still legal, so I'm going to be installing it and using it. And I'll have to adapt in the future if I need to, but in the meantime, it's still there. So, in order to install it, Got our uh, buffer tube here, and then in addition to depressing it, when you depress it, that's what actually changes the length, but to install it, you actually have to pull down on the front to uh, get the pin down far enough to actually slide on. And once you do that, it goes into your position, so pretty slick little deal there. Then we're going to put the upper on now. Get our pins pulled. And there we go. It's ready to rock. Well guys, completed product. I uh, hope you found that useful. Um, I'm going to actually put a list of all the parts that I use on my Patreon page and I'm going to put the link in the description below. Um, that way you can kind of see exactly which parts I use, see if any will be helpful for you or anything like that, if you can do your own research uh, on what type of parts you're going to use. Uh, I will also be doing follow-up videos with shooting it, doing it suppressed, not suppressed, maybe even in the future doing some different load testing to see what works best in it. But uh, regardless, I just appreciate you watching. Uh, be sure to hit subscribe so you see the upcoming videos of uh, me testing it out. And most importantly, don't forget to live life outdoors.